All right, good evening, guys. Kenneth Tortoise, Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for November 2nd, 2023. So at long last, um, we were able to get the book through the mouse maze at Amazon. And uh, book number one, Foundational Trading, Plan, Prepare, Execute, Assess, Mastering Trading Strategies for Continuous Improvement uh, is available uh, at Amazon, the paperback version there. We're still working on getting the Kindle version and I'm trying to get the um, file back from the editor so that I can offer my own digital PDF version of it um, and uh, give you a better deal on it. But that's that's the paperback version there that I think will be the best price available on it. <clears throat> uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, we got nine more planned and we'll see how fast we get those done. But uh, my goal is to have them written by Easter and uh, we'll see we'll see how that goes um, let's start with sniper trade uh, sniper trading with the hybrid swing uh, 30 minute charts this one is uh, Alcoa where is my there we go Yep, so this is uh, Alcoa, 30-minute charts. Uh, We had the big gap up. So once again, every place yesterday where we were short and we cashed it before the close, we're going to be happy because today featured across the board large gaps up. Uh, This one, Alcoa just monkeyed around until it broke north uh, on like an intraday cot of two, if we can say it that way. Standard risk closed very well at the top of the day with plus three. It was above the peak of the RL10, so I'm holding that one uh, overnight with a three R cushion. AI uh, beauty. So this was the largest intraday gap or the overnight gap, I should say, gap from here all the way up to here, paused for a moment and then took off like a scalded ape. So we put a standard risk on it, and then that one ended up doing about 10 or 12 R on the three-minute charts, and so we just maintained one of the opening positions uh, as a swing trade, and, and off it goes. It's well above all previous resistance levels, so this one has potential for some real legs. Uh, Amazon, so yesterday we got, we finally got into it with a emerging dragon and held it and today it just continued to grind. So that was part of the tech leadership trade uh, where we were willing to endure the grind a little bit. And now that one's holding almost 4R and no resistance in sight. So up we go into Christmas. We'll see. Caterpillar. Uh, so we got the cot of two early yesterday. And it was a tight risk. And it closed very well. And it closed with a for our cushion yesterday so we just held it and then it continued to march and then as it began to resume treated that as a intraday cot of two added the second position on basically plus six and then both positions closed very well and gave us another three so this one is up three r and this one's up nine r so that's about a 12 r trade 12 are on two positions and it gets into congestion right about here so there's still a nice leg up before it tests so we'll see how that works tomorrow but I'll be preserving gains on that one cliff uh, same trade essentially uh, when it took out the uh, peak of the RL 10 and um, bought it started 
stabilizing, took two R and went home. Um, my brother says, hey, sorry I'm late. I just finished marking up charts. Five charts, 51 R. The gap was good because he was prepared. So looking forward to that. I hate a show off. Um, this was uh, CVS was a gap and go. I stayed longer than I had to, but I, I wanted to give it every chance to make make it work. So that was about a half an R took the dragon exit. Disney, uh, 2R dragon exit. Dish, uh, 2R dragon exit. Stop me if you've heard that before. Uh, Devon Energy, Cotta 2, PSAR flip, holding, and that, that really went screaming north. It was This was essentially uh, acceleration into the close, and that ended up being 4R and had cleared all previous resistance. So we'll just hold that one. Electronic Arts, um, no trade on that one, span of control. Emerging Markets, no trade. The gap was so huge and then went nowhere. Uh, Ethereum, uh, this one we closed the entry from Tuesday for about uh, 3R, and it was not participating in the upward move, so that rolled over, took the Dragon exit, and then it never worked. And then we had so many other things that were working, I didn't feel any burning urgency to get into this, uh, to that little recovery, so rotated out of it. Now, <clears throat> They don't look like much when they're starting, but um, that emerging dragon and PSAR flip coming out of the Z3 pinch on a tight risk and was closed and was working well all day yesterday. Second position closed well, got a great big gift that continued to march. So it was like, well, heck, let's go with the third position. So when the smoke clears, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve R, nine R, four R, twenty five R, two days. Favorable gap. We held it overnight because we had the cushion of markets money. And that allowed us to be exposed, in this case, to the upward gap. So we'll take it. And still working. Uh, appropriate stop would be at the PSAR, because that way your third, even your third position is still in the money. Uh, but I'll be looking to exploit that even more tomorrow. Uh, so Brazil. Uh, we had... Uh, the single entry from yesterday on the gap up and go, tight risk box, closed well, favorable gap. I had no more capital left because of the other ones that were working. So this just continued to grind and wasn't the flashiest one, but you know what? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll take plus eight on one on one position in two days. It's well above the R10. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Well, this is probably the perfect day to announce the book being sold, huh? We have somehow put a link into the book. You know, your mileage may vary. I got uh, Intel, agree. this was part of that whole uh, technology week, leading the way and willing to take a risk on the first signs of recovery. So that was a, a failure to fail with a rising river and an intraday uh, RL crossing the dragon that closed well. When, uh, th Tuesday was good, Wednesday was better, Thursday was best, and without even adding a position off of that initial tight risk, Six, seven, eight, plus nine. IP.
Uh, no trade. What is it? Greg posted the link? What, what's that to? Is that to us? Oh, okay. Um, no trade in real estate. Uh, IYR. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, this is the real, IP was an international paper. So the real estate, look at the humble beginnings of this little guy on the SSC that closed well. Second day, pretty good. Third day, pretty good. Fourth day, big gap up. So why not put a second position on? Because we have one, two, three, four. We have plus five markets money. So we can pick one of those and add a second position. And then that closed with another plus four on this one. So this one's plus four and this one is five and four is nine. So we're looking at plus 13 in really three days on real estate for crying out loud with a three and a half percent dividend if we hold it of X dividend. So we'll take that one. Coca-Cola, same thing, 8R. Uh, regional banks, we finally got into that one today on the gap and go, and that returned about 5R. Look at that. that were, there was no looking back on that one. And if you were on the three minutes, it's even easier, but that looks pretty easy on the 30 minutes. Some days the fish jump in the boat. Mattel, uh, I closed the grinder because it was only up 5R and starting to stall, and the R10 had rolled over. And we're starting to get close to the pre-gap price level. So like all the value's been squeezed out of it, the easier money. Uh, McDonald's um, re-entered on the gap and go. That one's 2R, but that also feels like something that's going to benefit from uh, buying pressure. No trade in Merck. Uh, Microsoft, we're just grinding along. And that was, again, part of the tech uh, resurgence, tech leadership trade and uh, we talked through that one at, on the day of and it just has refused to quit seven eight nine that's plus 10 r on microsoft the thing that every mutual fund has to buy and own we have a nice cushion on that one that could end up becoming a core position if this just continues to work i'd like to be able to demonstrate that uh, next up uh, marijuana Uh, no trade. NVIDIA, yesterday's entry is now holding 1, 2, 3, 4 R. Clean Energy, today's entry holding 4 R. Rivian uh, tried and then it failed. and Because everything else was working so well, it was just like, dude, unless you were really dominating, we're getting out and then missed the run-up. But we redeployed that into other holdings. So that was the move in the S&P. It gapped above that crucial price level that we've been talking about. It blew right through that. No resistance until it gets way up here. So that was just nothing but gains today. We'll see if it continues to hold tomorrow. Treasuries uh, gapped, but then no, nowhere. Tesla, we got a second position into it yesterday, a third position into it today. And now it's trading up around 220 from an initial entry about 198. That's a 10% gain on the first one, and that's holding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's about 13R in Tesla. Ridiculous. And then U.S. Steel, no trade because it just wasn't moving. So pretty good day uh, at the ranch. Um, let's get to the uh, sniper trade of the day. So this was uh, this morning, and this was foreshadowing of the kind of day it was going to be. So this is the visual box technique that we teach in the foundations and in the advanced day trading course. This is how much it varies when there's no buying or selling, no directional bias. So that's just the machines trading back and forth with each other. So that actually helps us pick the size of the MMRB the next day. 
it turns out that that's also very close to the R10. But you get this amazing gap up, momentary sell-off, and then goes. It moves an MMRB off the bottom. So you hold your nose and buy it, and then it does nothing but give you, an, a route when the R10 rolls over, an exit at the skin of the dragon for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5R, as plain as you like, in about 45 minutes. Then it rolls over and starts rolling back up, and this gives you a Kata 2 formation. That's what a Kata 2 looks like after that kind of a move, an orderly pullback, holding at the VWAP, and then a 1, 2, and crossing the R10. I just buy it with the standard risk. That's the same risk as this. That's the same risk as this. That is about 25 cents. On $400 of standard risk, that's uh, a th for si uh, 1,600 shares right there. And then that gives this kind of a follow through. Here's what that looked like on the Kata 2 reentry. There was the one that tested the VWAP and then reverse one, two, buy it when it crosses the dragon. And that just, we just stayed in that one the whole way. And then by this point, we're holding one, two, three, four R. And I got my stop here. This went up a little further and ended up exiting somewhere around five. So that's about 10 R with absolutely standard work. Good day at Flat Rock. Mm. All right, so this was put Hamad's. AAR sheet, um, documenting lessons and committing to actions in the moment. Uh, the pound, um, we need to be short here and take advantage of that short move and then we'd be in the money for the day. Um, in his stocks, he's reinforcing the fact that his planning process is good. He learned today that not to trade things he didn't plan, and AMD was not planned or prepared, and it did not go well uh, because he didn't really have a rehearsed plan on what to do. Late getting in and too jumpy inside here. Uh, and then when he did hit one, he stayed too long. Um, but Chevron is one he did rehearse, and that one, he ground that one out just like he's supposed to. Uh, George uh, doing a lot of good things right, and that's positive reinforcement, by the way. And he's doing cardio at lunchtime, and that helps him stay out of the chop. And uh, committing to these rules with accountability is doing good here. Um, doesn't lose, loses fractions, stays out of the chop. That's good. Um, I think we could have been long here. But he waits for the Z3 to begin to expand. There was probably a second position available here, but he's waiting for 2R. So um, he and then he cuts the loss quick. So that's a that's a pretty good day at work, and um, that's George's day. So good looking work from the boys all the way around. Let me see if my brother was able to mark anything up and post it. 51R day. I, suppose we want to see that yeah he's got some in here so let's see Nvidia marijuana AI not surprising lemonade and electronic arts here's Nvidia um, standard breakout Winter turns to summer and plays the rollover 6.2R. Uh, 
uh, marijuana standard breakout it rolls over for 3R uh, AI gets 9R off the initial burst a couple re-entries for 2R and then holding one with markets money overnight I think that has a good chance to dominate tomorrow we'll see right at the opening um, yeah lemonade a, a two-day swing that he's working on in here and uh, adds 7.2 and it was starting to stall so he cashes that re-enters with some markets money uh, on the 2R battle drill so using markets money to carry it forward and uh, electronic arts um, he had um, was using markets money earned during the day to take a position in a compound critical state with a cushion of markets money and it opened 23R in his favor started going up and then started coming down he said you know what we're up 3500 bucks which you could buy the foundations course and the creativity course man I got that underpriced way too much but anyway you that one trade could pay for a year's worth of work uh, so pretty good day at work there good job Bill and really good job getting that book through the process very proud of you and uh, grateful for the work you did um, if we we've been looking at a lot of grinding lately so on uh, the third day of a market recovery that had an explosive gap we're gonna see some different features um, in the report we're gonna see a bunch of different um, indications and that's just the reality of how fast markets can change in the swing time time frame where the market is today compared to where it was five days ago at the end of the week last week end of the week last week was pretty gloomy today it's looking pretty interesting and that's just how fast things can change in the five minute time frame like for instance five days ago we were down here at 410 looking at the bottom of the support channel wondering if it was going to break below 400 and a new 150 day low but instead after four days we're at we're 40 percent of the way off the bottom we're at the midpoint in the 150 day index have blasted through the dragon and are almost you know within a uh, spitting distance of that next intermediate eye and uh, that's an extraordinary change of condition in four days now you can see that the recovery when the turning point turns one two three entries are here RLXDs right about in here the breaking of the piece are up in here and now we're through the Bollinger Band main. we're still just past the Bollinger Band main today next target is the five-day high now we're already there son uh, the next target is the peak of the dragon at 434 peak of the RL 10 and the 10 day 30 day high at 438 so just how fast things can change here's what that looks like on the uh, 30 minute chart nice orderly change and we are back testing this key support level um, let's see still sideways volatile um, warning signs flashing about be careful that these don't become dead cat bounces in the joy of the last four days don't lose your mind remember that we are in sideways volatile and that the market giveth and the market taketh away so we got to pay close attention to our stops and only hold overnight when we have a solid cushion um, but lots of big breakouts on 10 day and one month Uh, same thing in the ETFs tons of breakouts only a couple symbols remaining on the auto framer um, very few auto framers like I said yeah Chevron energy cat USO so it's a lot of the energy and pharmaceuticals tech is fully fully valued 
very few squeezes. Interestingly, Microsoft is still kind of squeezed. So there's actually some room for that to break out and go. Dominated by spring and summer now, how the weather has changed. Um, the NDX really shows the um, just how widespread. This is index buying across the board, trying to bring calmitude to the markets. Uh, we'll see if that holds. But some amazing, amazing numbers in there. Whoa. The ones that I look at are the ones that are green on the 30-day. Two-day and 10-day strength is not a surprise. 30 days now is where you're seeing the real leaders emerge. Walmart, Microsoft, Intel, Cliff, uh, AI. Um, and the 30 days on the um, ETFs, gold, Brazil, diamonds, Latin America, EWW. And then take a look at KRE regional banks, 387 on, the, on your FM dial. PayPal, 359 on your two-day NDX. That's how amazing that move was. Standard work on the trading value based on daily range percentage and fraud quality number. Tesla and uranium continuing to crush it. So uh, that's everything we got for today. The sniper trades of the day are definitely worth reviewing. And um, that whole portfolio this whole week was really... I think an instructive week for the hybrid swing. I mean, that's really a workshop in and of itself. If you just took the opening 20 minutes of these dailies, you'd have a pretty good workshop. If I could get an intern to do that work, I'd have it already. There we go. All right, we'll catch you tomorrow. Let's be ready for them on uh, Fast and Furious Fridays tomorrow. See how much they're willing to hold over the weekend. That'll be the test. Ciao for now.